he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Happy Palm Sunday. Oh, that was weak. Happy Palm Sunday. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and what will we do? Rejoice and be glad in Him. If you're glad to be in the service, would you stand with us and sing with us? Glad about being in the Lord's house today. Glad, glad to be. he slay me yet will I trust in him the scripture for today will be coming from the 21st chapter of St. Matthew from the 21st chapter of Matthew and we'll ask you to stand for the reading but first we'd like to say to the to our visitor and to those that streaming in and to you Jerusalem and to all of God heavenly children good morning we were beginning at the very first verse of this 21st chapter of Matthew. And it read, and when the do night into Jerusalem and will come to Bethlehem and to the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus to the disciples, saying unto them, go into the village over against you. And straightway you shall find an ass tied and a coat with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord has need of them. And straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell you the daughter of Zion, 
Behold, the king come unto thee, meet, and sit upon an ass, and a coat the foal of an ass. And the disciple went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on them the clothes. And they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garment in the way. Other cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. And the mother too that went before and that they follow cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? In the last verse, and the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Thus in the reading of God said word. The word of God to the people of God, you may be seated. Let us pray. Jesus said to his disciples that men should always pray and not faint. Prayer is asking. Prayer is seeking. Prayer is knocking. The Bible teaches us that if we ask, it shall be given. If we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door shall be open. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Father, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. O gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come this morning with bowed heads and we come with an humble heart. Most of all, we thank you for our last night laying down. Thank you for placing your angels around our bed post. Watched over us all night long while we slumber and while we slept. And then early this morning, you didn't forget about us. You touched us with the finger of divine love. Woke us clothes in our right mind. We were able to get up and put on our raiments. Make our way to the breakfast table. Eat your bread and drink your water. For that, we say thank you. And then, our Father, we find ourselves back to the house of prayer one more time. We can't say anything but say thank you because you've been so good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. So we ask you to have mercy upon us. Father, have mercy because somebody needs you right now. Father, I need you. We need you in our home. We need you on our school. We need you on our job. Even we need you in our church. So we ask you to have mercy. Somebody sick today, Lord. Somebody may be on the sign of my weak voice. Don't feel well. Lord, we know we have a lot of sick members of this church. Father, we ask you to have mercy upon them. Father, we ask you to heal their mind. Lord, if you heal their mind, blood pressure will go away. Father, counsel, pain will leave our body. So we ask you to have mercy. Have mercy upon our pastor right now. Father, you know he needs you. Have mercy upon his family. We ask you to lower him down in the storehouse of wisdom. Lower him down in the storehouse of knowledge that he will feed our soul until we want no more. And when we leave this place this afternoon, we will leave saying, oh, did not our heart burn while the man talked with us about the way. And then, Father, we ask you to look down upon the Reed family right now. Father, we ask you to strengthen them where they're weak Build them up where they are torn down. Let them know, Father, that you don't make any mistake. Father, we ask you to have mercy upon them. Strengthen them in their need. Father, have mercy right now. And we ask you to look down on, on every auxiliary of this church. Touch them out of the way. Touch every leader. Touch every member of this church. And, Father, when life journey have come to an end, when we, too, have to go into our room and press the dying pillow, we pray that you give us a home somewhere in your kingdom. The blessing we ask in Jesus' name. For our 
Father's sakes we pray. Amen. And amen. I need your help. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise him. Oh, I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise him. to praise him. Oh, I love to praise Oh, yeah, he's my rock. My rock, my soul is and he's my will. And I will never, never let me down. No. I can find hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Oh, oh the praise his name. Oh, oh, I love to praise his holy name. Oh, he's my rock. My rock, my soul, my shield. He's my will in the middle of the wind. He will never, never that I oh hallelujah hallelujah I love the praise his name oh hallelujah hallelujah I love the praise his name oh hallelujah hallelujah I love the praise oh the jewel that I have found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to praise his name. I love to praise Holy name. Come on, bless the Lord today. Come on, come on, don't fool me now. Do you have a reason to praise his name? Come on, do you have a reason to praise his name? 
The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do you have a reason? Not somebody else's reason. Do you have your reason to praise his name? Do you have a reason to give him praise today? Come on, come on. Come on, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Jesus said that if these should hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. But anybody know I don't need a rock crying out for me. I can, I can speak for myself that the Lord has been good and is greatly to be praised. Amen. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is the same, and so we bless him today. Let's give it up for these men. Thank God for these men today and these deacons that have led us into a time of uh, worship. And thank God for our music team and uh, pray God's blessing on us. Amen? Amen. It's so good to see all of you today. You don't have to say anything, but any first-time guests today, don't have to say anything. Just wave your hand. All right, everybody here, well, give yourselves a hand today. It's so good to see you uh, on this uh, uh, Palm Sunday, and uh, and so grateful for uh, grateful for uh, uh, all of you. Amen. Listen, there is a word in the book of Luke, uh, Luke's Gospel, uh, verse twenty-three and thirty-four. Twenty-three and thirty-four. Words are on the screen as we just stand in reverence and recognition of the word. The Bible says, let's read it together. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. So I'm going to preach from this thought, the right word at the right time. The right word at the, at the right time. Can you believe we are, we are just a week away from Easter? I mean, this, this calendar year is just moving along. And as I thought about this time, I think it is critical for the church that we engage this annual time with the word and the narratives that connect us to the cross. As we try to say every week, beloved, he did die one Friday. Perhaps we can get back to it next year, but when I started out um, leading up to uh, Easter, we would take our Bible studies and we would read through an entire gospel. And uh, I'd, like, I'd like for us to, to get back to that. There's nothing like reading the Word of God and being able to see a gospel in its entirety from Jesus' birth to his crucifixion and resurrection. If you were in Sunday school this morning, uh, we covered the cross and the death of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of Luke. And with pun intended, a lot happened and happens at the cross. Beloved, can you, can you see Jesus there on the cross? Not the cleaned up, whitewashed imagery that we often get, but can you see him according to the word? The Jesus of the Bible, the Bible says he had been scourged. The scourging was a whip. And then thin the whip almost assembled to a cat of nine tails, a whip that had many strands. And within those strands, maybe all kind of shrapnel and, and animal claws. And when they would whip, when they would whip the criminal, uh, it, the, 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 the scourging would cut into their flesh and immediately bleeding and bruising and other things would occur. And so when we see Jesus here on the cross, uh, as we see this first word, blood is everywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't look cute at all. I know we have our charms around our neck and thank God and we have the imagery uh, but a much more harsher experience is there at the cross. The cross where Jesus' 
body lay naked. As you saw in the text there, the Bible said that they cast lots for his clothing. Here is a man who is before uh, the community within Jerusalem during the time of the Passover. And there he lay naked and, and embarrassed before the whole world as those soldiers stripped him of what he had. The cross where Herod's soldiers mockingly placed on him a crown of thorns. This man who was supposedly the king of the Jews is mocked. He's got a, a crown of thorn on his head. And as those thorns rip into the crown of his head, blood is streaming down not only from the scourging, but also from the crown of thorn on his head. The cross, beloved, the cross, the cross, the cross where they have spiked nails in his hands. So in, in his hands, by crucifixion, usually one would die from suffocation as they had to, after a while, support their body by the hands that were nailed to a cross. And eventually the blood would come up and eventually they would, they would suffocate on their own blood. But one Friday, beloved, our, our Jesus was there with nails in his hands and rivets in his feet. Beloved, he hung there. And on the cross, he has what some have said, seven last sayings, seven words from the cross. And many of you may have grown up like I did. We used to have Good Friday service. Amen. When, and maybe we, we find a way to, to get back to that from from noon to three, six hours, one Friday, he hung there. And on the cross, Jesus gives us seven sins. It was one Friday, 2,000 years ago, God the Son came in human flesh and gave his life for us on an old rugged cross. And he hanged on the cross. And seven sayings ring out from the cross, and it is good for us to hear a couple years ago, Dr. Hezekiah, who sits there, Dr. Coleman, uh, who was home and continued to pray for him, and myself, we preached through the seven sayings, all the seven sayings. And this morning in your Sunday school lesson, I think about three of them uh, were covered there. And, and, and so we have these seven sayings of Jesus, of which the first, which you talk about today, is, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He also says to the thief who, who repents and asks him to remember him in his kingdom, he tells that thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. Letting us know that he's just not the God of another chance. He's the God in the last minute's notice chance. I wish you hear me today. That's why you got to be careful judging people because you don't know how or when they met the Lord. And their relationship with Jesus and their relationship with God is between him and them only. Not only that, but, but, but Jesus' his mother Mary, who birthed them, is at the cross. And he says to John, his disciple, woman, behold thy son. And he says to John, son, behold thy mother. And the Bible says from that hour, John took her home and began to look after Mary. Jesus has these seven words on the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As he takes on the full wrath of what it meant to bear our sins upon the cross. Oh, he had to bear our sins. Uh, he bore our rejection so we wouldn't have to be rejected by God. I, I wish you hear me today so that when we stand before him, uh, all we do is we appeal to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, for one Friday, he bore our sins upon the tree. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquity. Help me, somebody. He was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes, we have been, we've been healed. Uh, that, that's why we preach the cross, because that's where I've been healed. That's where I, I've been made right with God. 
is on the cross where Jesus says, I thirst. And the Bible says he does it according to the scripture. Everything Jesus did was yielded to the Father. Who would give their life to go on a cross? As those followers, they mocked him on the cross that if he was the Son of God, surely he would come down. But anybody grateful that he hung there? He hung there till he was thirsty. He hung there till he cried out, Eli, Eli, Lama Shabbatani. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He stayed there till the job was finished as the sixth word. He says it is, it is finished. It is finished. And, and, and growing up hearing it, the old preacher was saying from the Greek word to telestai, which means paid in full. Jesus, he paid it all. He, he stayed there till he paid it all. And, and I don't care who got something against you. Aren't you glad today that he paid it all? Aren't you glad he, he, co he covered the bill? And he covered the tip. He, he paid it all. Ain't nothing left else to be, to be paid. And all with great humility and surrender in the cross. His final word is, Father, into thy hands I commend, I commend my, my spirit. This word we have here, this first word, the word here is recognized as the first saying on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Proverbs 25 and 11 says, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Sometimes it makes sense to just have a right word. You know, everything don't need to be said. I wish you'd hear me today. Sometimes folk know what they're doing when they say stuff. Amen? Help me somebody, Frank Ray pastors in Memphis, Tennessee, and he said he had to learn which member to tell who. <laughs> he said he had one member, he said, he said, tell them the pastor want to see them, amen? And they go in with sternness and folk get scared thinking it's something. No, no, every, sometimes you got to have a right word at the right, at the right time. At the right time. No word like a right word. Because you know, if you got a right word at the right time, you can have a wrong word as well. You do know about four years ago, the previous president of these United States got on television and said, give them hell. Help me somebody. And, and, and said that not knowing that it was a wrong word. And a whole mob went down to the Capitol building and tried to usurp this country on January 6th about four years ago. Because you can have a wrong word at the wrong time. Try yelling rat or roach in a restaurant. You can have you can have a wrong word. But but he got a right word at the right time. And Jesus, beloved, has a way of saying things. That's why it's so important to have a relationship with your word, so that you can be ministered by the word. This worst word comes is a word at the right place and at the right time. Now remember, some of you <coughs> may not realize this, but this is Luke's gospel. Luke is one of the gospel writers, and Luke says, sets out, if you read chapter 1, he said, I set out to write an orderly account. I, 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 there are many people who have undertaken this, but I, I have set out to do an orderly account of what things about the life of Jesus. And for 2,000 years, the church has recognized Luke's writings as authored by the Holy Spirit and divinely given to us. And uh, somebody had to read it first, and so he writes to Theophilus, and we don't know if Theophilus is generic, because Theophilus means lover of God. Could be actually somebody named Theophilus, or it could be generic that is to all of us, lover, lover of God. But it's a gospel for sure that is written to all. And so you got to imagine the first reader who ever read it. Now, I know y'all been hearing it all. Help me, somebody, every Sunday. You've been hearing it since you were a child. You've been hearing it over and over again. But can you put yourself in Theophilus' place? As he has been reading this long scroll, as he has been reading, somebody had to lay their eyes on this for themselves for the first time. And so sometimes that's why we pause during Easter. I know you're 
heard it before, but sometimes we got to refresh ourselves to what Jesus did one Friday on a hill called Calvary. And you see him reading this gospel, full of narratives. But now, a climactic drama, the angry mobs, the, the judgment of Pilate, the two men on the left and the right. And in verse 30, Jesus is now, on 34, Jesus is now on the cross. Can you see Theophilus reading? Can you see his eyes getting big as he reads what is next? And he comes to the words, then said Jesus. What would he say with nails in his hand? What would he say with, with rivets in his feet? What would he say as they took his clothes off, as they gambled over him, leaving him naked? Can you see Theophilus coming across the words, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You know, we take it for granted because we've heard it before, but the first words of Jesus are not complain. Amen? It seems like he got a right to complain. He's got nails in his hands. He, he, he's got a, if anybody got a right to complain, he's got a right to complain. You, you grew up in church. Help me, somebody. They said he was judged by a kangaroo court. He was drugged from what, judgment hall? Come on, oh, y'all talk back to me. I'm, I'm talking to black church folk. Help me, somebody. You done heard the story. He, he, he's got a right, he's got a right to complain, but, 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 but he doesn't complain. He, he's got a right to address the conflict, amen? If somebody is hurting you, quite naturally, and in this world's economy, if somebody hurts you, what do you do? You hurt them back. Jesus, Jesus is not trying to get back at anybody. N neither, neither is he trying to take control of the situation. He, he seems, as, as he hangs there, as humiliated as you could ever think. He fully embraces the experience as he bears our, our shame for us. But Jesus responds in care. Can anybody thank God for his care? Can anybody thank God for his mercy? I mean, I know what I deserve, but I'm grateful for his mercy because in his mercy and his care, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And see, I see, I'm glad that he, he said it, but I'm also glad when he said it. Because, beloved, this is a right word at the right time. You know, Jesus could have said it in his childbirth, in his childhood, when Herod made a decree to kill all the male children trying to take the life of Jesus. But he, but he didn't say it there. He could have said it in Luke chapter 4 when he was in his hometown and they wanted to throw him off the cliff for saying that today the prophecy was fulfilled. They, they're like, you can't be the Messiah. We know your mama and daddy. We know Joseph and Mary. We know your brother. We, you, you can't be. He could have said it there. He could have said it in John 8 when he picked up stones to throw at him, to kill him, because he said that before Abraham was, I am. He, he could have did it. He could have did it there. He could have did it in the Garden of Gethsemane when the mob of soldiers came to arrest him, when Judas, who acted like was his friend, help me somebody, you might know your friends will betray you, his friend came and said, I kissed him on the cheek, signifying that he was the one. He could have said it right there. Could have said it when they beat him. He could have said it when they whipped him. He could have said it when they scourged him. But he holds these words till he gets before the cross. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for the cross of Jesus Christ. We, I, I, that, that's why we magnify the cross is because of what he did, what he did right there on the cross. And sometimes you got to strengthen. And we, again, I say this all the time, we consecrate ourselves before service, the group of us, choirs and ushers and, and deacons, we get together because sometimes you got to get out of this disturbed mind and you got to set in the fact and the reality that Jesus died for you and when he was on the cross his words as father forgive them for they know not what what they do you know beloved it was at the cross that covered backwards and forward it was at the cross that covered all of history's sin 
Sometimes a theological question is, well, what about those people that were born before Jesus? Uh, when he died, he took care of their sins, too. When he, when he died, he took, care, he took care of humanity's sins. Preacher, how do you know? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through his son Jesus, we might be saved. And I just stopped by to tell you, it is in Christ Jesus that you are made right with God. It is in Christ Jesus that you have. A relationship with him. It's Isaac Watts who put it this way. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would, would he devote that sacred head for, for such a worm as I? Would, would a king really? It's common, it's common, it's common for the subjects to give their lives up for the king. But one Friday, the king gave up his life for us. Isaac Watts said, at the cross, at the cross where I first saw, I wish you hear me today, where I first saw the light and how many know, and the burden of my heart, it rolled away. And it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Was it for sins that I had done that he groaned upon the tree? Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. The cross is love. Amen. The cross is his grace. The cross is his mercy. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. Maybe you feel condemned. Maybe you feel like you're in shame. Maybe you feel judged. Maybe you feel guilty. But that's all a message. You just got to get to the cross because at the cross, there is mercy. At the cross, there is compassion. At the cross, there is grace for you. Romans 5 and 7, one translation says, now most people would not be willing to die for a good person. Most of us would not give up our lives. Help me, somebody. You, the, the, you, 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 in Uvalde, Texas, them cops wouldn't give up their lives for them children in that school. You don't hear me today. And you can say what you would have done. You ain't, never, you ain't never been in that situation. So don't be talking about what I would have done. But take the word, but the word of God for it. Help me, somebody. I done seen video where people don't put their little children so the Rottweiler and Pit Bull. Scarcely will you find somebody who will give their life even up for, for a good person. Though some might perhaps die, be willing to die, for a person who is, who is especially good. If some soldiers, they commanded to take a bullet for the, for the president. But how many would y'all take a bullet for me? <laughs> we'll see your glory, Pastor. <laughs> but the Bible says this, but God showed his great love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Watch this. Some folk only learn to love you at your best. But you better, you, so we don't know when to shout. He loved you at your worst. Now, maybe you're not at your worst right now, but many of you, you can go in your mind right now and you can go back to a time I was, I'm doing everything I ain't got no business doing. I'm in a place, and some of y'all can be honest, I should be dead. I should be sleeping in my grave. I should have been caught up in the drama, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ. Christ died for us. And that's how you know love is real. Folk are like you when you're up. Folk are like you when your coins, help me, folk are like you when your ends are meeting, but can they like you and love you? Uh, let me say this to some young people, whoever in here. <laughs> Be careful talking about they, they love you. How they love you? Love is an action word. Says, Father, Father, forgive them. Now, I promise I'm about through. Preacher, who was the them? The them was Pilate. The them were the soldiers. The them was the mob that yelled, crucify him, crucify him. 
The them was Peter, who denied him. The them included Adam and Eve, who ate of the fruit. The them was Noah and his drunkenness. The, the, the them was Rahab and her harlotry. The rim, the them was David and his adultery. The them was those who committed bloodshed. It, it was Israel and his backsliding. But I'm grateful for all them. But even more, the them is you and I. Oh, can you, can you put yourself there? The them, the them is you and I. In the text, the Bible lets us know, in the Greek it's in the aorist tense, it, it meaning that he probably said it more than one time. He, he, if, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them as they, as they did what they wanted to do. And you know if you can be honest, if, you, if, if the Lord had came back on your life 20 years ago, if he came back on your life yesterday, if he came back on your life five years ago, but I'm so glad that in the midst of my my sin and brokenness. Yeah. He said, Father, forgive them. Yeah. But what is about this part? For they know not what they do. Yeah. A whole lot of us got problems with that. Yeah. Because you've been hurt and offended by people. You mean to tell me he didn't, they didn't know what they were doing? Oh, I wish you helped me today. You mean when they said what they had to say, they didn't know what they were doing? Did they honestly not know what they were doing? But I stopped by to tell you, they knew they were nailing some hands, but they did not know they were nailing his hands. They knew they were riveting some feet, but they did not know they were riveting his feet. We knew we were sinning, uh, but we did not know what our sins would count against us. Uh, oh, I'm so glad that even in my ignorance, uh, even in my blindness, uh, God could forgive me uh, through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, is there anybody here uh, so glad you've been forgiven? Uh, is there anybody here today uh, you can receive the forgiveness of God? Uh, you cannot help what you've been through. Uh, you cannot help what mistakes you have made. Uh, you cannot help what sins occurred. Uh, let me bless somebody. You cannot change yesterday. Uh, and a whole lot of us, you are ruining life because you're looking at life through the rear view mirror. Huh? But if you just turn around through the love and grace of Jesus Christ huh? and see that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Huh? I'm so glad the old has been passed away. I'm so glad that the new has come. I wish I had somebody. Now there are going to be people that will still judge you according to yesterday. Can you just tell them please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Is there anybody here No, God is still working on you. God is still forgiving me. You might not forgive, but every day when I pray, is anybody here I've had to ask the Lord, forgive me. Come on, keep it a hundred. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. I shouldn't have said it. Forgive me. I shouldn't have done it. Forgive me. And I'm so glad that the message is the same. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ain't he all right? Ain't the Lord all right? I'm so glad the devil can't do nothing with it. I'm so glad Biden and Trump can't do nothing. I'm so glad y'all can't do nothing. I'm so glad I can't do nothing. God has got me sealed, wrapped, swallowed up in his hand in love. Ain't he all right? Come on, ain't he all right? Come on, I need somebody who know you've been forgiven. I've been forgiven. I've been set free. I've been set free. 
by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I have what I have. And he all right. Yeah. 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 See, a whole lot of us is messed up because you're looking at everybody else's sins. You're looking at everybody else's problems. But if you just get in the mirror of his word, you'll see how he forgave you. Come on, bless the Lord today. Come on, bless him today. Bless him today. Bless him today. For an unconditional love. There's somebody here and I, I need an unconditional love. I need somebody who will, who will love me. Sometimes I watch in the news and I, I see the heinous and worse of crime. But if anybody needed Jesus, it was me. If anybody needed his love, it was, it was me. The Apostle Paul says in his letter to Timothy, I speak a truth that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the chief. If you're looking for a sinner, I'm in a sinner that I tell you, he'll love you. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. He'll take that old black mean heart, dip it in his red blood, and wash it whiter than snow. You let you walk in new freedoms, yeah. and new graces. Come on and bless the Lord today. Listen, we want to extend an invitation. Want to extend an invitation today for somebody who has who is in need of in need of God's grace, in need of His mercy. And perhaps today you need a church home. You, you've been looking for a church home. You can come by invitation. You can come by letter. Amen. I mean, the doors of the church is open today. Come on, will you come? Don't let this day move by. Will you come? The Bible says confess in your heart. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. The Lord Jesus, that God raised him from the dead. You could be saved today. Yeah, you could be saved today. You don't have to pay anything. You could be saved today. You could be saved today. You could be saved today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on in. If you're falling away, you can come back home today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is his name. Come on, is he not your savior? Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. savior. Come on today. Savior, Savior, Savior. There's still room for you today at the cross. Whatever your need may be, you come to the cross. You come to the cross. Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Jesus is his name. He'll be your healer. Healer, healer. There's still right time today. There's still room. Healer, healer, healer. Jesus is his name. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you today. Thank you for the good news at the cross. A word of hope, a word of mercy, a word of grace for us. 
Lord, we bless you that in Christ there is no condemnation. In a world where we want to get rid of each other and we give up on each other. Lord, we thank you for these powerful words. Father, forgive them. Thank you for the daily prayer that you, you tell us to forgive us of our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Thank you for your word to confess our faults. That we may be cleansed and forgiven of our, of our sins. Thank you for your word. You're the God who's able to restore us of our, the joy of our salvation. Thank you that you're able to make us anew. Lord, we bless you today. Lord, we pray for those who have come down today. Special needs, going through different things. We know that you are able. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are our peace. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner. Lord, we need you today. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. Somebody is in need of one thing and somebody another. And Lord, we ask today, we ask it in your name, knowing that you are able. Thank you for the prayer that you taught us. You said, when you pray, say, our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever in Jesus name put your hands together come on bless the Lord today amen oh. all right come on Patricia come on amen amen now, even before Patricia said it, Patricia always got a home, but she one of my COVID casualties. <laughs> and I would say to all my COVID casualties streaming in, it's time to come on home. It's time to come on home. Come on, let's come on home. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. And Patricia know where she belongs, amen? She know where she belongs, amen. You, you, you a church-going family, <laughs> amen? And, uh, and Patricia it had some heavy moments. And uh, she even got a miracle back there. Yeah, pray, praise God for Antonio back there. I remember a day, I think, I think one day, Antonio, was it seven strokes? Three. Three. Wave your hand, Antonio. Amen, amen, amen. And so we're going to keep praying for them. And uh, you, you want me to be your pastor? Oh, yeah. All right. You want Jerusalem to be your church family? Yes. All right. You still believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Most definitely. Oh, come on. The devil can't fool with the rest of it. Amen. Amen. And so, listen, Patricia, just come on home. First Sunday, we'll extend you the right hand of fellowship. Amen. And uh, we just thank God for you and uh, pray your mercies on her. Amen. Just stand your, stand your hand to Patricia today. And we just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, you know everything Patricia needs. And, Lord, we thank you today for how you're working stuff out. Thank you for her faith to make a step today to come to you. And your word declares that if we draw nigh to you, you will draw nigh to us. And I pray in this season, she will know you in ways like she never knew before. Father, we thank you. Refresh her, rekindle her, bless her family, her children, grandchildren, her siblings, the seed, all the family around her. We know that you're able. Even her ain't B and ain't Georgia. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, to God, give God a praise today. Amen. 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 All right. All right, all right, all right. Sithi, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. This, it's all, it is all good. It is all good. It's all good. Oh, man. Father, forgive them. Amen. And, uh, and uh, she feels God has something for her to do, something, a word in her mouth and on her life. And so we'll be, be praying for you. And uh, all we do is just keep coming home. Amen. And uh, the Bible says uh, your gift will make room for you. And so God knows what he, he needs you to do. Amen? Right. Amen. 
And let, let's just extend our hand. Now, this your, your mom is Patricia. That's right. And this this your who? Then your oh Lord, them come on, them to come. <laughs> Half the church. We know you South Side. Come on, y'all extend your hand to Cynthia. Cynthia, Lord, thank Lord, thank you for Cynthia's faith. Thank you for her journey through many dangers seen and unseen. Thank you for her courage to still trust you. God, I pray that you would give her clarity and authority as she walks in all the things that you have for us. Pray for peace, Lord. Pray for courage, Lord. Pray for your grace as she goes along the way. Lord, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Cynthia. Amen. 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 Come on, come on, Roger. <laughs> all right, all right. Praise, praise God for uh, brother and sister Roger. And look now, they've been they've been coming, and uh, and then uh, a few weeks a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, this Gail said, uh, "I got a call from from the couple. They said they go come to uh, 11 a.m. Bible study." I said, "Oh, okay. <laughs> they serious, serious." And um, and uh, Roger, sister Roger, they've, they've announced that. They just been trusting the Lord, and uh, I believe you me. I want you to be where God wants you to be. If it's around, crowds down. But anybody, thank God that they're here. <laughs> I thank God that they're here. Amen. Now, now I appreciate old school. Amen. They done it decency and order. I, uh, it's 2024, so we take you anyway. But I talked to their pastor, and uh, Pastor Heron. They come from Mount Bethel. And uh, you know, Pastor Herring is is uh, is a son of Jerusalem. I'm Pastor Herring pastor, <laughs> but he couldn't give a better word for them. He couldn't get a better word for them, and uh, really gave his blessings. Said that y'all, they they will be a blessing to your church. They'll be an encouragement, and I can say they ain't been nothing but that. Amen. And so we give God a praise. Amen. I talk with our, our chairman of deacons. Some of y'all may not know Deacon Taylor. Stand up, and uh, talk with Deacon Taylor today. I talk with uh, our vice chairman. Deacon Williams, and um, he was a deacon at Mount Bethel. He was a deacon at Mount Bethel, and, uh, and so we'll be talking, but he's he ready to serve, humble heart, and so we thank God for him. On well, yesterday, I had to put him to work, y'all. <laughs> I had to put him to work. I didn't have victory yesterday, but uh, thank God for, for Brother Rogers today. And, uh, you know, I, I, I received the testimony, but y'all, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh. Yes, sir. Amen. Believe that he died on the cross? Yes. Yeah. That he rose again on the third day. Yes. All right. That, amen. Give God a praise. That's your Christian experience. Let, let me say this while I'm here. That the, the main reason for our church and our, our identity together is our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. All the other stuff is secondary stuff. You want Jerusalem to be a church home? Yes. Exactly. Oh, yes. Now, now we need some workers. Amen. And they look like <laughs> they, they give themselves. They gave themselves. And so uh, we know that. But we thank God. You want me to be your pastor? Yes, sir. All right, man. The devil can't fool with the rest of it. Amen. Come on, give God a praise today, brother, sister Rogers. Now we, I good. Uh, thank God for uh, Deacon Simple, and uh, he he's been recovering. So I, I'll check in. But we'll have our new members uh, fellowship, and uh, just have a time to make sure people are connected in. Amen. And know what's going on in our church. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Come on, give God a praise for them. All right, come up, Philip. All right, right. Philip. Yes, Philip. Philip, Philip, you, where are you from originally? I grew up in North Carolina. North Carolina. How long have you been here in Jacksonville? Oh, only about three days. Three days, yes, three, days three days, three days, three days. Philip, Philip. And Philip, you, you want prayer today? Yes, sir. All right, all right. Well, y'all just extend your hand to Philip today. Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you today. Many people talk about the prodigal son, but in the name of Jesus today, we talk about the prodigal God. And the prodigal God who will love you abundantly, who will lavish his love upon you. We lift him up today, Father, knowing that you are able, a wandering soul, moving from place to place. But pray, God, that you would give him a home. Pray that you would give him peace. Pray that you would restore unto his mind and his life, Lord, everything that the enemy has taken from him. Lord, the devil is a liar, God. You are. The enemy is defeated today. We pray for victory. We pray for your grace. We pray for your power. We pray for your love. We pray that he would experience in his life. Pray that you would give him a new song and a new testimony. We pray that you would establish his feet upon a rock, that you would establish his going in the name of Jesus. 
Father, thank you for his faith today to come into worship, to be with us, Lord. And Lord, we praise you and we bless you today. We know that you are able. May we as a church family be an encouragement as only we can. Pray for him today, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Bless the Lord today. Bless the Lord today. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say Eh, hey, watch this old school. Let the deacon say. Let the deacon say. Let the deacon say. Amen. 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 Let the lady say. Let the lady say. Let the lady say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Let the men say, Let the men say, Let the men say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Come on, bless the Lord. Let the church say yes, 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 Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Been so good, been so good, been so good, been so good been so good so good come on bless the lord today come on give him a praise today come on ain't nobody mad but the devil come on bless him today praise god for new start and new mercies and we thank him today come on you can be seated in the presence of the lord amen amen thank god for his goodness amen come on worship him amen come on bless him today Come on, bless him. You ought to praise him today. 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 He, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still a deliverer. He's still a healer. Help me, somebody. He's still a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. He's still Jesus. Amen. Amen. And whatever you need him for, he'll, he'll be there. Come on, give God a praise again today. We thank God. Thank God for all of you. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for all of you. Amen. Listen, just a quick reminder. Members, remember, um, during the week and during business hours, Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m., 6 p.m., Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m., 6 p.m., that we not park with uh, where our, our uh, tenants, our business tenants are, and they have a, they have a right to, to run <laughs> their business. And uh, we, we've had some grace during the, the funeral hours where uh, not for people to park there, but to, to, to do something with our, our tenants. But it ought not be that way. And sometimes you just got to tell people, tell, tell your relatives, tell other people, we, we just don't park there. Respect for them. Because they pay to be there. And, uh, and we want those businesses to flourish and be all that they can be. And so let's respect that. And that comes from uh, Brother Briggs. Amen. And uh, Brother Briggs, just wave your hand. Brother Briggs is our chairman of trustees. Give it up for Brother Briggs. And uh, thank God for a lot, a lot they do. Listen, a quick announcement after morning worship. Uh, Sister Elaine would like to meet with Young at Heart. Young at Heart. Young at Heart. Young at Heart is our seniors ministry. Amen. So if you need a place of fellowship and belonging, amen, Young at Heart is a great place to be, right? Am I right? All right, all right, <laughs> all right. So that, that Lord Jesus, let, let, let me get on my soapbox. <coughs> a right word at the right time, y'all. 
Amen. So they'll, they'll be meeting afterwards. Um, Saturday, April 27th is our all leaders meeting. Uh, continue to pray for uh, our sick and shut in. Amen. Next Sunday is our youth Easter program. Brianna, wave your hand. Amen. And uh, Brianna, Lord, I'm saying this in front of the, uh, make, yeah, right, make sure we t- take care, take care so we know what's going on next week. But we thank God for uh, our youth and our young people. Remember, first Wednesday in April, we'll both have uh, Wednesday day and Wednesday uh, evening uh, Bible study. And you ought to fit yourself somewhere in there, amen? Ought to fit yourself somewhere in there, amen? If you can't come in the daytime, t- 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 you come in the evening. And, uh, and if you still can't say, Pastor, Wednesday day, Wednesday evening don't work, you got to let us know, amen? Because you have to grow in the word. You have to grow in the word. And uh, we, we're not autopilot believers. We grow, uh, we grow in the word and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Uh, man, just a, a few other things. Continue prayers and thank God for everybody, our deacons and uh, Gerald and team and everybody who helped on yesterday uh, to get done as we served um, uh, Sister Lula Bell Clinton's family. And again, I can't thank God for our church. Every time we called upon, we, we stand up and then God gives you a ram in the bush to help you, uh, help you get along the way. And so grateful for yesterday. Continue prayers for that family, Alma, uh, Selene, and Janice and that, that whole family. Amen. Uh, continue to pray for them. Thank God again. We had our annual meeting this past Monday and had a good chance of, of dialogue and discussion and uh, helpful conversation as we move along the way. We, Jerusalem can only be as good as its weakest link. As long as its weakest link. And we used to, they used to have a saying sometime when you left church, if every member was like me, what kind of church would this be? And so you, you take that and you, you begin to pray Say, Lord, what, what would you have me to do? If the Lord wants you to be on time, start being on time. If the Lord wants you to come to Sunday school, start coming to Sunday school. If the Lord wants you to tithe and give, you start, oh, 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 Lord have mercy. If the Lord wants you to forgive your neighbor, you ask the Lord what he wants you to do. And, uh, and you watch and see our church will, our church will, be, will be blessed. Amen? Uh, listen, one other thing. I promise I'm done. Y'all, we, and I have to do a better job of it. Thank God. Give it up for Sherilyn. Give it up for Sherilyn, y'all. Now, <laughs> uh, we got our union this weekend. Our union is this weekend. And I, I didn't say anything. And, and um, a lot of it is just kind of just in the midst of our calendar. But we, we are in a part of a network of about eight churches. Amen? And uh, Jerusalem is the big church. You may, you may not see yourself, but we're the, big, we're the biggest church actually in our whole, that participating, we're the biggest church in our entire association but for sure in our district. And, um, and so they, they look for us to be uh, brotherly and sisterly. And I know, Sherilyn, I think you, you said you'd be there uh, today. And, um, and so every fifth Sunday, this year they moved it because of, um, because of Easter next week. Um, but th- this week, if you do have time, today at 3 p.m., they'll be at Peace Baptist Church on Rose Street, and that'll be the closeout of our, of, our, of our union for this time. But every fifth Sunday, we want to make a, an attempt and appeal to fellowship with our sister churches that we're not alone and uh, they are not alone. And so we're in this together. Amen. Continue prayer for our sick and shut in and bereaved. Good, I think I saw Dan Brown today. I said, Dan, sister, good to see you. Uh, sister Williams today. Good to see you. Little sister Lenora today. Uh, I'm trying to think if I see anybody else that's here today. But thank God for all of those that we are praying for and want to keep praying for. Good to see many of the Corleys back there. Continue prayers for their family uh, and the passing of, of their mother. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. All right, March birthdays. I think I said that, but March birthdays, give it up again. Let's give it up for our March birthdays. Amen, thank God. Amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's get ready to give. Let's give our tithes and our offering. Uh, we're so grateful to you, uh, grateful to God for the ways that he has uh, established and kept us. Um, on the first Sunday in April, I'll be doing a report of, of uh, what we covered during our annual annual meeting. But uh, I gave on give La- Cash App today, Cash App. I gave on Cash App today, amen, at the top there. So I gave, I gave today, amen, that's my tithes and my offering. And I'm a firm believer that if you could trust God with his, with a dime out of every dollar, 
Trust God and watch what God will do with the 90. Amen? And he's more than able uh, to keep you and sustain you. And he's a big enough God to handle all your responsibilities. All, you, all I can tell you is that I'm a living witness of what God can do. And uh, we can be faithful in our giving. And how many trust in God for abundance this year? Anybody? Anybody want to raise? Anybody looking for promotion? Amen. Anybody looking for new opportunity? Amen. Now, we don't, we don't give to get, but we give an expectation, and amen, that, that God honors and rewards our faith. And so, um, and so we, want to, we want to obey our way uh, and as God blesses us along the way. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for every way you have sustained us and kept us. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for paychecks. Thank you for stipends. Thank you for pensions. Thank you for social security. Thank you for safety nets. Thank you for children and parents and loved ones that look out for us and friends. God, we just want to thank you for every way that you send it in and every way that you take care of us. And we want to thank you today because we paid our rent, paid our mortgage, put gas in our car, got some food on our shelves, clothes on our back. Lord, you have allowed us to take care of so many things. And we just want to say thank you today and honor you today in our giving. We bless you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord today. Listen, you can stand as we follow the direction of the ushers. You can give uh, through our cash app as they play up there, dollar sign Jerusalem Jacks. You can give through Givelify if you download the Givelify app. You see our church logo and my family. Or you can give the non-traditional way. Amen. Good to see Marcus today. Gentle giant. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the faith of your people. May you be pleased as we give. May these gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's receive our, our superintendent today. Amen. Now, the, the pastor ain't perfect, y'all. <laughs> he ain't perfect. He ain't perfect. And last week I, I, I did something that I didn't, I, sometimes you, you don't know how your things you do may impact people and hurt people, and I'm not big enough to say sorry. And, uh, and so we had a, a little bit of something. And uh, but Sister Rosa Grant, she so faithfully serves uh, both our Sunday school and our vacation Bible school. And, and does it, and does it uh, year in, year out. I'm going to call her Thick Skin Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I said something I kind of said off, but she she is grateful for the Sunday school and the ministry workers that God has given her, and she just wanted to take time to honor honor those as uh, and we did, did get, didn't get a chance to last week. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good afternoon. Whatever it might be. First, I want to apologize for the confusion and the way that I received the message and everything. And I want to thank everybody who gave in the card, you know, during bereavement and everything. I really appreciate it and thank you very much. So at this time, we want to acknowledge all of our teachers and the support staff of the Sunday School. I think I have enough. So let's get started. Um, 
first we'll start with the beginner's class. That's Sister Devin Bracey. I think we know her as Michelle. Primary, Sister Daphne Simpo. My name is on it. It makes it easy. And Sister Hortense Moody. Sister Sherilyn Smith, who? She did. Mm -hmm. Sister Angela Edwards. Sister Joyce Thornberry. Sister Gail Bryant. Sister Julia Howell. Sister Jackie Coleman. <coughs> Deacon Graham. Reverend Coleman, Deacon Herman Williams, Sister Iva Smith, Deacon Benny Taylor, Sister Doris Gregg. Now we have the uh, ladies in the, the young ladies in the Gloria Jefferson Sunday School class serve as the hostess for the Sunday School. And I just thought it was only fair that we uh, give them. Okay, the ones that really, the two people that we have set aside for that was Serena and Lydia Blackburn. But during their absence, so they can't do it, we have the others from <laughs> that group who help out. Sister Elise and Naomi Blackberry. Three extra? Uh -huh. Two. Oh. Okay. Who didn't get one? Did we overlook anybody? Deacon Reagan. Surely he did it. Oh, Reverend Coleman. I didn't call Deacon Johnny Taylor's name, but he has one. Right. He got it, he got it, he got it, he got it. All right. All right, let's give it up for our Sunday school, <laughs> school workers. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. Let me get there. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the uh, volunteers, the workers for the uh, fulfillment hour. Now, if you're not in fulfillment hour, you're missing a treat. We laugh, we sing, we pray. Oh, and we eat. <coughs> we eat too. And so, come on. Be a part of the Sunday school. You won't be. You'll be glad you did. Thank you. Now I want to talk about the Vacation Bible School. <laughs> Just take on over. <laughs> does not have a cell phone or a tablet or electronic gadget. Oh, see, everybody got one. Good, because we are getting ready to uh, kick off our vacation Bible school, and everything is going to be electronic this year. Not the teaching, just the registration. We want you to register. We have a QR code on the table out front, posted on the door. We'd like for you to uh, sign up. 
Now, registration is very important. It helps us to know just how many uh, books to buy, how much food to buy, and stuff like that. It helps us in ways we wouldn't even think of. So we like to know who we'll be, be serving and how many we'll be serving on a daily basis. So go on to uh, scan that QR code, or you can go jmdcjacks.com. That's our web page. And all the information you need is there. It will take you straight to it if you go through the web page. So don't be intimidated by it. I know it's, it's uh, something new. And uh, a lot of us don't like change. But it's here, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Because you go to the grocery store, you got that QR code. You go to the restaurant, and you sit down and eat on your receipt. That's how you pay your bill. And uh, they will help you out there. And we'll help you out here, too. We have our registration people, Lachey and Tiffany. Tiffany. <laughs> Lachey and Tiffany will help you uh, any way they can, and you the, know, the, get the you signed up. And anybody who <coughs> is familiar with these QR codes, let's help one another. Let's get this thing going, get it off the road. So, And don't wait to the last minute because this is new to me too, and I'm trying to stay ahead of the ball game. I got the pro church profile and all of that in there, but... Uh, we have others we need to get loaded in now, too, so they will be able, like Lachey and Tiffany, get them a sign in so they will be able to uh, do the whole thing during vacation Bible school. Okay, last so, so and uh, last. Let me, just, let me ask you, because the QR code is on the table. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's on the w window, the door as you walk in also. Last but not least, we need help. We need help. In every area of Vacation Bible School, we need help. We need teachers. I don't think Gerald would have a problem getting help in the kitchen. And Cheryl Lynn, I don't know transportation. She's available. So, but we need teachers. That's the main thing. We need the teachers in every area. We need these teachers. We need our uh, worship leaders praise and worship, and recreation. We need your help. Don't hesitate. Go ahead. Sign up. There's a space for volunteers and a spot for participants. Okay? Uh, off the top of your head, do you know the next meeting for VBS? The next meeting for VBS, I did this, and I was handing it out to everybody who was supposed to be here. We were supposed to have kickoff today, but... That fell through the crack. Our next meeting for Vacation Bible School is scheduled for April 20th, 24, at 11 o'clock here at the church. And we're asking all volunteers to be present, okay? But to the uh, VBS com committee, we want to get together before April 20th. So we got some things we need to iron out before that, like the schedule, the rotation schedule, and stuff like that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. I love you. But we need your help. Thank you. Hey, Amen. God, God bless you. God bless you. Rosie, you forgot something? Oh. She, she's also our web developer, y'all. I to give her a new title. <laughs> hey, Amen. I think if you go on the web page, you can find the QR code as well or a link uh, to our VBS. And so thank God for that. Amen. Y'all ready to go home? All right. Who said that? Is that Jordan? Oh, which one was that? Come on, Michaela. Michaela, you want to sing with me? All right. Come on, Michaela. Let's get ready to go home, y'all. <laughs> Let's all stand. As we leave the sanctuary, 
as we go our separate ways. May God's favor rest upon thee. May he cover you with his grace. Oh, I'll keep praying for you. Mm -hmm. Please keep praying for me, me, yes. May God keep us all in the palm of his hand till we're together again, together again. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all till we meet again. God bless you. You are dismissed. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Brianna Gallion. Did she leave out?